Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about the remainder theorem. This video will blow your mind. It will change your life. I'm not even kidding. The to-do list. What is the remainder theorem? Doesn't sound earth-shattering, does it? But just wait, you'll see. Then we'll do a quick synthetic division re review and we will do a worked example using the remainder theorem. And then after that, we'll do a brief discussion of remainder theorem and x-intercepts to see if we can kind of tie things up at the end. I'll also put timestamps with all of these items in the video description so you can move ahead quickly if you'd like. All right, the remainder theorem. What is the remainder theorem? Here it is in all of its glory. Two lines. Nice, huh? If a polynomial that we call f is divided by x minus c, where x is the variable and c is just some constant, then the remainder is equal to that function evaluated at c, which is this constant. That is craziness right there. Because what this really means is that division of polynomials is equivalent to function evaluation. That is mind-blowing. You probably never even thought these two were even remotely connected. But they're actually just two sides of the same coin. Long division of polynomials, synthetic division of polynomials, is actually just equivalent to function evaluation. The remainder, just to repeat this one more time, because you're still probably seeing stars after being hit by the remainder theorem club. The remainder theorem says that the remainder of the division process, so you do the long division or, or synthetic division, and you get a remainder, that remainder is the same thing you would get if you plugged the c, the constant, into the function and just did a basic function evaluation. Amazing, right? That is pretty amazing. Now, before we show you that this isn't just smoke and mirrors, we need to do a quick synthetic division review, just in case you forgot what the remainder part was when you're dealing with division of polynomials. So let's go. Um, we have our placeholders. Um, we have descending it or of exponents. And we have the coefficient set up. So the whole thing's set up. Now let's do it. So 3 times 1 gives us 3. We add and we get 7. Then 3 times 7 gives us 21. We add and we get 16. Then 3 times 16 gives us what? 48. And we add and we get 53. And then we can write out the answer just like this. The thing that's important is that this right here is the remainder. Remember that, 53. This part right here, remainder, 53. So we just divided a long polynomial by x minus 3, and we got 53 as the remainder. Keep that in your head. Here's our problem. Exact same thing, right? Divide this long polynomial, which is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5 by x minus 3. Same thing I just did up here doing synthetic division, right? Same, same problem. So our theorem, the remainder theorem, says that this function evaluation is what? f of 3, which is the c, right, should be what? It should be the same thing as the remainder. What was the remainder? Did you already forget? The remainder was 53. 53. That was the remainder. So f of 3 should be equal to 53. Is it? It's the million dollar question. If it isn't, I have destroyed all of your faith. 
in math and me, probably. So f of 3, we plug in 3 for all the x's, and what do we get? Well, 3 cubed is 27. 4 times 3 squared is 36. 5, negative 5 times 3 is 15, and plus 5. So we have the negative 15 and 5 give us negative 10, and that gives us positive 26 when we add it to that. So we get it 27 plus 26. Oh man, 27 plus 26? 53. Can you believe that? Same thing. It's true. Math is true. That's mind-blowing. That is totally mind-blowing. The remainder from our synthetic division was the same thing as the function evaluation. All right, now I've totally blown your mind. Let's see if we can wrap this up with a little bit of discussion. Here's the discussion. So when you have a remainder of zero, what does that really mean? Right, so let's go back up here for a second. Remember this was the remainder right here. When that remainder is zero, what does that mean? Well, according to our theorem, that means that f of c, which was the number that you were dealing with, f of that number, so if you plug that number in to the function, you get zero out. That's what a zero remainder means. And we know what that means, right? What 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 is that? That's this is an x y coordinate pair, right? X y the c is the x and that constant's the x and the y is the zero. So that's just like this picture with some number and then zero, which means you're on the x axis. So a remainder of zero means you have found an x-intercept. That c that you're playing with is an x-intercept. Because that remember, that's all you do. When you solve for x-intercepts, all you're doing is setting the function equal to zero and then solving for the x that makes it zero. In other words, a remainder of zero was just finding an x-intercept. The remainder theorem is actually amazing. Hope your mind was blown. Subscribe to the channel and have a great day.